After I've combined my pinch pots into a single form, that's the point that I want to start addressing the surface. So at this point, my surface has quite a few nicks and dents. You can see a lot of my finger marks from where I have pinched the clay. So I like to use when I'm smoothing just a cup of water and a rib tool with a straight edge. If you don't have access to a rib tool, I find that old discarded gift cards are really great. And you can even take pinking shears and create a serrated edge on them if you would like. So the way that I tend to smooth the clay is by roughing it up a little first. Um, again, if you don't have a serrated tool, uh, I've known people that have taken hacksaw blades and cut them into sections and used those. Uh, you could use old jigsaw blades that didn't have too much of a tooth to them and that would work pretty well. But the idea is that as you're running the serrated edge against your clay, it's scraping lumps and as it's moving that clay across the surface, it's filling in dents. So I usually do this all over. And then making sure that my smooth edge is nice and clean, I'll go back and start smoothing. Now, this is a multi-step process or a back and forth process. So just because I'm smoothing now doesn't mean that I won't go back and use that serrated edge again, which I might need to do. But this is going to help me start to determine problem areas. So I can already look and see that I have some indents that probably aren't going to scrape away. So to get rid of those, I might take just a little bit of water on my fingertip and put it in those dents. And then just like you're patching a hole in a wall with spackling, you're going to take some plastic clay, you're going to place it or patch up those holes with it. And I would let it sit. I would let it cure a little bit before I went back and started smoothing. And maybe you can move on to another area. Sometimes if you try to smooth it out too soon, it just pulls that clay right back up out of that divot. You'll also notice that I'm using the rib tool to scrape the clay as well, especially if you don't have a lot of downtime between smoothing and when you've attached your two pinch pots together. Sometimes the seam it persistently kind of pops out and so it's necessary to scrape that down a little bit. I always tell my students that you want to start with the smoothest surface possible. Sort of like you might want to start with a clean piece of paper before you write on it. Or some artists want to start with a clean or gessoed canvas before they start painting. I 
I think it's natural for students to automatically want to add a bunch of water to their clay surface to smooth it. But students should be reminded that when you add water to clay, you're starting to break it down. And there's already quite a bit of moisture in the clay. So whereas a little bit of water might be necessary, it should be used in moderation. Also, a lot of times when students add too much water to their clay, they don't realize that they are actually washing away those fine particles that make it smooth and leaving behind the larger particles which make it sandier or grittier feeling and looking. So I always tell them to exercise a little bit of caution with adding water. So you want to be really careful if you clean a metal rib tool off like that because it's a good way to slice your thumb open as I've learned firsthand. So just be careful. Always exercise studio safety. All right, I feel like we're getting to a pretty good place. So when I'm done smoothing, I might give the bottom a quick look. So at this point, my combined pinch pots are fairly lump and dent free. And I can set, that, set it aside and wait for it to stiffen up a little bit more before I manipulate the surface. 